morning everybody uh, it's not the prettiest of days it's very rainy and I'm wearing jeans which is yeah a little bit of a defeat I have not been wearing jeans for at least three months yeah but it's too cold but yeah what I'm here to talk about is of course the weekend in soccer uh, I want to talk about the games that I've I saw and then as I already said in a few other videos, I'm gonna put my attention onto the UEFA Nations League. Sorry, it's sometimes a little bit dark because there is not much sun here. It's all rain, rain, rain. Uh, foggy, rainy, misty, highway. Well, uh, unlike last weekend, I only saw four and a half games and that's mainly due to because there was the Friday night game that I usually do not watch Friday nights unless it's a really good one and I didn't even know that Serie A has now a Friday night game well it was a scorcher Milan against Roma my two favorite teams playing each other from my get up here you can definitely tell who won it was Milan 2-1 um, first of all I have to say the jersey matchup it was a little bit surprising, but it made all the sense in the world. We had a Milan in the classic black and red with white pants, white socks. I absolutely loved that look and I also love that Milan is not punished with the crazy Puma font. They can use their own font, uh, which actually looks decent. So uh, the Milan jersey this year I again like a lot. Still the front back issue you have the red centered on the front and the black centered on the back is a little bit odd but I think overall um, as I said before it passes the smell test and now that I've seen it in the typically uh, configuration with white pants I actually really like it uh, still have to get used that it's not Adidas because that's, really, that's what we had for the past oh, yeah, 20 years 19, 20, 20 years I'm all in Adidas and now it's Puma Milan um, but the more surprising thing at first was for me that Roma played in the third jerseys which to at that point just had been released I mean they had been leaked but they were released potentially just for that game uh, because they saw in the fixture this is the first time we're gonna wear them maybe they were, were hoping that if they get a good good result they will sell more but they didn't it was a 2-1 victory for Milan the yellow looked sensically but it looked to me more like a Galatasaray shirt than a Roma shirt I like the city map on there um, I think the colors as a third jersey are really smart for Roma it really makes sense for them to have a yellow jersey especially if you play against the black and red team uh, it provides a sufficient contrast to what was odd were the Red Sox going with it. There I would have liked to see an all yellow look but uh, again against Milan uh, since they play with the white pants white socks uh, it was not a big foul but I imagine uh, say Roma plays against uh, say Barcelona in the Champions League um, the third jersey they would have um, if they would use the third, third jersey would be a wonderful color matchup with the red pants on the feet. Although I think against Barcelona they probably will use their white jersey. Well, to the game, uh, that's probably the one I watched the closest of all the games I watched this weekend. Uh, it was actually a really good, exciting game, and I have I have to give it to Serie A. Some of the best games I saw this season were Serie A games. I mean, uh, it's two weekends now, but uh, Serie A games, except for the second one that, that I watched, really exciting. Uh, going forward, everything uh, really looked like, and this was the same. Uh, Roma played with a weird tactical formation at the beginning with three on the back, and uh, we are told totally come call of guard by Milan who took control of the game in the first half it was almost all Milan except for one chance I think by Jenko. Um, Giannoglio was sorely missed in uh, Naples uh, he took the game to Roma uh, was a great presence on, on, on the field Iguain uh, actually was part of the team this time around I thought uh, against Napoli he was a little bit uh, still a foreign 
uh, parked. He he was part of the team, and it again it made me nervous like hell. But uh, they did it well. They when they had the ball in defense and were under pressure, they didn't use the long ball to give a possession more or less. No, they used short passes to play themselves out of a bad situation, even in their own box at times, which is super dangerous, especially when you see all those yellow shirts in this case around. Uh, but they did this well. Uh, and I'm starting to actually appreciate that, that they use uh, an intelligent way, I hope it's an intelligent way, to get out of bad situations. Uh, they seem to be very secure on the ball, Over, overall, especially in the first half. I mean, they, they, I don't want to say they dominated possession, but when they had the ball, they were very secure with the ball. So this I really, 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 really liked, I have to say. So, yeah, and uh, going forward, I think it was always the, the last pass was often missing or uh, the finish was missing. But yeah, there were some. I mean, uh, Bonaventura had a chance, Egoin had a chance, uh, I think Jalanoglu had a chance. Uh, it was really going forward, going forward. It was opportunities every minute. Uh, and then, yeah, Cassie made the goal. Uh, with egoing, bundling most of the defenders, and um, yeah, Rodriguez out wide, uh, cross in, and Cassie, who is not exactly a goal scorer, made the breakthrough goal. And at that moment, yeah, I really thought maybe Milan should have added a second uh, thereafter. The game would have been dead and buried. No, Roma came back and came back with a vengeance. Uh, for the first 15 or so minutes, I think it was still a little bit, it was an even match, it was not that uh, Roma was dominating, but you could see Roma, they switched to foreign back, brought on El Sharavi, which still hurts a little bit, he was a Milan player, but yeah, even at Roma he's not uh, tearing things up exactly. And then um, Roma hit the equalizer with about, uh, yeah, was I think 56, 57 minute. Uh, was a little odd because the ball seemed cleared after a corner and then Sonzi makes a great goal uh, by one-timing it in the low corner of the net. Pretty much the same goal just from a shorter distance that Milan got against Napoli uh, by Zielinski. I think it was also the, or the equalizer back then. And then I thought, oh yeah, this could go the other way because uh, Milan's game is very work intensive and Roma uh, seemed poised to take over the game, similar as Napoli did just a week ago and now it was already uh, level again. But Iguain scored a 2-1, <laughs> but it was taken away. I was so happy once Iguain had scored, but yeah. I'm gonna watch the lights here. But yeah, uh, the VAR system showed that he was offside by, I think, his toenail. Half a foot was in front, which, yeah, uh, I guess it, the whole body counts. But yeah, it was a little bit hard, heartbreaking. I was hoping that it's the body that counts. But no, it seemed to be the whole body counts. So he was really by just a fraction offside and then they wiped the goal away, which, yeah. Uh, would, would have meant a lot, I think, for Egoin and the whole team. But as 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 you could see, uh, they were all celebrating with the uh, reserve players. It seems to be that Milan is actually at this moment, at least, a team, and that's good to see. But no, it wasn't. And then, as everyone, this every Milan fan feared, Roma really took over the game and took the game to Milan. Um, were the better team for at least until the 75th, 80th minute and they also had a go-ahead goal that was wiped out by VAR but this time it was uh, much more clearer because Nzonzi really with both arms had contact with the ball so yeah that one was wiped out too uh, otherwise it would have been a 3-2 game I guess and then Gattuso finally made changes and that to me was the, uh, I, I, I was wondering why, why doesn't he, he change the team, uh, but he made the changes uh, very late and it was Laxalt uh, that came on, uh, who brought a lot of 
power in there. It was Castillejo, who I never heard before, honestly, but, and I thought, oh, what's that gonna be now? Uh, since it was brought off uh, uh, Noglu, who actually vanished, I have to say. He had a great first half, but then um, went a little bit under. Um, but he was always keeping Roma on the tip of the toes. And then, of course, he brought on Cotrone, a second striker. And suddenly, in the last 10 minutes, Milan took the game again to, uh, to Roma, took it away and uh, were able to assert themselves. She had a few chances, I uh, thought it will end 1-1 and then basically the last action of the game, yes, there was a kick of it uh, thereafter, but not much more. Higuain played a wonderful pass into Cutrone's path and yeah. Uh, a winner. I'm not sure if I want to say a deserved winner given how the game went, although I think Milan had for the most part, uh, for most of the game, the control of the game, so maybe it's slightly deserved, but yeah, it was an important 2 1 victory. And you had two tough games to start the season. The Genoa game was wiped out and now you had to play Napoli away and Roma at home. Um, the scheduling is horrible for Milan. It was horrible for Milan. I hope it eases off now they can make a few points. And yeah, great game to watch. Absolutely a great game, especially in the second half. The first half was all Milan. The second half was a really an exciting game and even with the two goals taken away by VAR, uh, it just added to the drama. So. That was my highlight of the weekend and I've been wearing Milan gear almost ever since. Ever since. And yeah, tomorrow we're gonna come back to national teams. Then uh, I think it took a while until the second game on Saturday. I watched a little bit at the beginning of Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, Nîmes against Paris Saint-Germain. I saw the first two goals. Um, I think the second goal was really nice. By Di Maria it was a direct corner. Uh, the first goal yeah, it was played out nicely by and Neymar finish and of course had to do something dramatic. There was a sign mocking him and he went to uh, kind of mocking the fans. Somehow I understand it, but be above those things. Don't be such a CC about every, 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 everything. I saw them the highlights, Neymar equally equalized and yeah, uh, were equal to um, PSG at that part, uh, but Mbappé made one of his signature goals to make it 3-2. I mean, this was the Nîmgatti equalizer, probably should have held back uh, and defend the result, I guess. But yeah, they wanted more and they ran into a counter-attack and yeah, with Mbappé, it's deadly. And yeah, Cavani got a fourth to make it 4-2. Uh, as, as I said, I saw the first half a little bit, it was not, it was okay. Uh, it was the, this was my French experience, I liked the Nîmes, uh, the jersey matchup there. And also I thought the atmosphere in the stadium was great. Uh, gotta give it to uh, Nîmes, you're definitely a team I'm gonna watch a little bit more. But why did I switch away? Well, I decided on watching Bologna versus Inter. Honestly, there was no Premier League game at that time that interested me and I really wanted to see a little bit of Inter or maybe embarrassed himself and almost, they almost did. The first half, it was such a blood display, they had a lot of possession, it reminded me a lot about Spain. A lot of possession but no vertical movement. Horrible half by, uh, by Inter. Uh, Bologna well should have gone into, into, into the lead. Um, they played, I think, Inter in white with black pants and Bologna played with their nice home shirts. Uh, like the jersey matchup at least. Uh, Pippo Inzaghi as a coach, yeah. Well, it's fun. I want to see Pippo. I hope he will be as successful as Simone. I love Pippo as a player. Uh, yeah, then they got really with the first chance in first real chance to make the goal by Nain Golan, which was well executed, I gotta give it to them, and then uh, Bologna tried a few things, not sure if they hit the bar, but I, 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 I think they had, had a chance or two, uh, 
then they made it to nothing, and then at, at, at which point I switched back to the PSG game uh, to watch the end of that one. Uh, missed the great third goal that I saw in the replay. And then, uh, yeah, I wanted to see Atletico Madrid against Celta. I came exactly when Celta made the second goal, and yeah, it was all Celta in that game. Uh, especially when I watched. It was already 2-0, two, two uh, it could have been 3, it was why Papa went away right after a red card for Atletico. I uh, was not impressed by Atletico, really not. Uh, I know I had them pinned down to be uh, my, not pick, but a sleep book for uh, making it uh, to the Spanish champ championship, uh, not that way. Uh, but you know, every team has a game like that in the season, uh, maybe that, that was the, they got it off early. Yeah, there was not much from Atletico Madrid that, uh, to talk about. Celta Vigo, uh, except the horrible jerseys. It doesn't look that bad in game, except that it's very blurred here because of the switch of the striping. I just don't get it. Make it normal. If, make a normal striping, it looks okay. Even you can make, I don't like it. Even if you made, made a fade from, you know, a lighter red to darker red, I would, I, I, I would get it more. But not the way you do it. It's just half. It tries too much with too little, I would have to say. So yeah, Celta jerseys I liked a lot, uh, especially it's just the light blue with a little bit of dark brown. Yeah, it looked nice. Um, and then in the evening, I decided I it didn't intend to, uh, but then I said, well, let's watch it. Parma versus Juventus uh, got the chance and. Boy, was that a great game, really. Uh, the first half, gotta say, was all Parma. Juve got the second minute uh, blunder goal and then it was all Parma and I have to say it was all Chevigno. Uh, he took it to Juventus. Yes, Juventus had a few chances as well, but didn't look as solid, especially on the back. And Chevigno, I think, was cursed that uh, his teammates are maybe not as forward-thinking as he is. Uh, he really, I don't want to say took Juve apart, but he did a lot of things in that. He scored the equalizer. Uh, yeah, was well deserved, I think. I'm getting my bar, getting the bars, but I think Parma hit the bar as well. They, uh, at, at least they, I, I, I know they had one great free kick. Chesney uh, twice had to make a save on Parma. I think it would have been easy 2 1 if not 2 0 at halftime. Um, then I um, didn't see the beginning of the second half, but I, when I came, uh, my tweet made the 2 1. Um, and yeah, Parma still had another chance, but at that point it seemed like you had control of the game. It was the classic game, if you don't get this first goal, uh, I think Parma could, could, could have gotten the result, but the first goal by Mandzukic was, yeah, a little bit the ball breaker for them. Uh, of course, we have to talk about Ronaldo. Honestly, Ronaldo looks like a foreign object in the team still. Uh, I, he has a high work rate. He tries to be a good teammate. I have to say that as well. Uh, I mean, when you saw the goal that he um, that he did not score against Lazio, where he was a little bit upset with himself, I guess um, uh, there was a little bit old Ronaldo. But uh, this time around, he played. A, uh, he was a good teammate and celebrated with everyone. He actually probably caused more problem by his pr mere presence. But he's, I have to have, have to think he's not that integrated yet into the Juve team. That ha definitely has to be said. And for that reason, I think it's a little bit hard for him to get going. Uh, but just that he is Ronaldo causes already a lot of uh, unrest in every opponent. And that's something to be, uh, that has to be counted in his favor. But yeah, Juve got a 2-1 win. I still maintain Parma should, 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 should got the draw. Jerseys, uh, yeah, it was not a colorful ma matchup. The best thing was the goalkeeper who wore the Parma away jersey. 
uh, Parma goalkeeper, of course. Uh, the Parma home jersey, I still don't get why they have the white with the black cross. I know it's a classic look, but uh, it has nothing to do with Parma in my opinion. It should be yellow and blue or white in there. And it would look perfect. You were played in the black shirts with yellow. Um, it was that bad that at, some, at times you had to remind us that it's Parma in the white. And then we also already get into Sunday. I watched actually uh, what was also said in the evening. I watched the highlights of uh, Real Madrid against uh, was not uh, Getafe. I think it was Le 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 Well, Real Madrid. Speaking of Ronaldo, Real Madrid uh, looks liberated a little bit. That and that can be dangerous. Uh, I dismissed Real Madrid a little bit at the beginning of the season and yeah, uh, every game is a little bit, I mean, there was one, one at halftime and uh, the other day, uh, day at Girona, they were also one nothing down, but uh, Real Madrid looks a little bit liberated, I have to say. They could be a dangerous team, a little bit surprising. But yeah, uh, Sunday. Um, there was also at the beginning no, not, not much that I could watch and I was, uh, you know, was with my family quite some. Um, I started at 5, I watched the first half of Watford against Tottenham and except Elton John there's not much to talk about except the one chance I think it was um, Dele Ali who, was, who got the ball on his head and it almost fell into goal, a long ball and he was standing at the edge of the box and the goal was a little bit far out. Uh, honestly, that was together with the Inter Bologna first half, a Bologna Inter, the most boring half I've seen at the beginning. People are so impatient with the driving here. Uh, yeah, Inter Bologna uh, was not a great game. Uh, I saw the highlights, I know that Tottenham got the lead, uh, the, the, the lead by an own goal from the chest far out in and then two corners turned it around for Watford and uh, it was a better game than of course I didn't see it because I wanted to watch Barcelona uh, but surprisingly <laughs> they started I thought they started six now it was 6 30 so I got to see the first half hour of Fiorentina against Udinese which was another game that really looked um, good to me a, it's those two of those second tier teams in Italy uh, that can be dangerous but not always are like mid-table clash but most importantly those two towns that I visited last year so there's some interest there as well of course um, the last time they played a story died in Udine yeah tragic still tragic and I think they remember that I like the pre-match pageantry that they had with all the historical costumes and so on so that was uh, Nice to see uh, the game was similar to what for Tottenham, but with a little bit more of an edge. It was a little bit more vertical movement. Again, a little bit surprisingly, uh, but I think both teams, there yeah, was just a little bit more fire in there. Both teams played forward uh, without really breaking the deadlock. I have to say Chiesa was outstanding for Fiorentina. And yeah, then I switched over to Barcelona. I will talk about that, but in the halftime, uh, I said I switched back of that game, and uh, it was right the way where you can see most of both games. And I watched in the second half, uh, which was again the same, a little bit cagey, but still interesting to watch affair. And then Chiesa on Benassi um, launched a counter, counter attack. Chiesa had the ball in his own half, crossed over a little bit. Uh, let the Udine defenders actually catch him, but then he played a great through ball on Benassi, who was actually far out and he smashed it into the net. Great goal. Absolute great goal. I give Fiorentina a 1 0 win, and I have to say, the atmosphere in that game, uh, at least on, on TV, you could really hear every whistle, every cheer. Great atmosphere. Um, Barcelona, yeah, started off. Uh, funny because uh, Wesker got the first goal uh, and yeah, 
Barcelona defense was not that great, but this was the game that when Huesca got the first goal, I, I thought there are two options now. The first one is that Barcelona will struggle and Huesca will uh, just pull all on defense. Or this is exactly the spark that Barcelona needed to get going. Yeah, well, 10, 10 to 10 times later, you could see Messi doesn't need much uh, space. Messi scores a goal. And from then on, it was kind of Barcelona showing everything that they have, at least in offense, not on defense. Uh, it was still a little, little bit sloppy. The 2 1 was an own goal. The 3 1 was a great play that, yeah, if this was in Italy, it probably would have been offside, but maybe just, nah, it was not. Uh, they had the line. But it looked at least a little bit of side, but it was well played, beautiful uh, play by and then Suarez made it, made it, made it 3-1. Uh, great line by the com commentator. The way this passing play evolved, both it's well, it was like the third date with your new girlfriend. Both knew it's gonna happen, and it happened. That goal. So yeah, uh, Uesca actually pulled one back, and yeah. Sloppy defending by Barcelona. I think they didn't take it as serious because it was Huesca after all. Um, and then second half, yeah, Barcelona. I think was a little bit annoyed that Huesca scored two of them and they got it rolling. I mean, uh, it ended eight to goal after goal after goal. I actually watched almost the entire sex, 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 the second half. Uh, I rebound so yeah to get the whole Barcelona experience. Um, I cannot say much except that Wesker probably tried to play too much uh, with Barcelona and didn't rely too much on defense and that um, didn't end well. It was a beating. Uh, and that was basically my weekend. I saw just a little bit of uh, Betis against Sevilla. Jersey matchup. Ah, yeah, I didn't talk much about the Jersey matchups. Uh, Watford Tottenham, yeah, was well, first jerseys. Tottenham looked nice. Watford didn't like the yellow back. Um, the Fiorentina Udine classic. I, it's, although it has the color, I'm sold on the Fiorentina home shirt. Although I like the Save the Children sponsor, it makes all sense in the world, but it looks, looks a little bit too rigid. At least the color is functional. Uh, Barcelona, yeah. You don't see that the pants are darker, but um, with the thin stripes, it almost looks like they have a purple jersey, almost. Um, would wish... I would like to re see a little bit more of the blue there. Oeska's cross. Great jersey. Great jersey. Uh, I think a very bold jersey. like that one a lot. Um, and then, yeah, I, I'd, let's talk about Sevilla against uh, Betis. Sevilla, the, uh, the great derby there. Uh, yeah, Betis looked all right, although this green star up here, and I don't like the Sevilla away jersey. It looks odd to me. And yeah, I saw also highlights, some other highlights, but better not talk about it. Well, uh, don't have time. I'm gonna go to work. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Let let, let me know what you thought uh, about the games that I saw, which games you saw. Uh, please share with me. I watched again a lot, not a lot, as much as last weekend, but I think I saw overall a few more games again. Hello again, everybody. I forgot to talk about the Sampdoria Napoli game, which I only watched the highlights, but that's enough to recommend you watch the highlights too. Two great goals. The first goal already was better than the great goal that Fiorentina scored by Benassi, but the third goal is the best goal of the season so far. and. Yeah, if there weren't the, uh, two bicycle kicks by Bale and Ronaldo, probably would be the goal of the, sea, of the year. Uh, by Cagliarella, Cagliarella, however you, call, uh, <laughs> you pronounce it correctly. Um, a low cross in and he backs heels it in the corner. 3-0 uh, for Sampdoria. It doesn't look good for Napoli, honestly. They've been behind in every game. It came back twice, but it doesn't look as solid. But then there are many games to play. I'm curious to see how Sampdoria will go. Go on YouTube, look for Sampdoria Napoli. I might post a link in the description below or right here somewhere. Absolutely watchworthy. Absolutely watchworthy. Well, with that, again, uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked the entire video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these. And I'll talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. 
Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.